Okay, I'm back for the second example. Uh, the reason I wanted to break this up is in case uh, my first example went very well, but I make a mistake in the second one, I don't have to restart the whole thing from scratch. And since, uh, all right, anyway, this is the example I already shown you. And if you still need more practice, I'm gonna do one more example, such as, you know, with, with completely different values for all A, B, and C values. Now, again, D I'm leaving off because uh, all that does is shifts, once the graph is drawn, it shifts it up or down just the way it is. So that, that's really almost trivial. Anyway, so here I, uh, here's my, my new example. And I will be, well, let's identify what my values are. A is three, B is one half, C is positive pi over four, and D of course is zero. Now from B value, we get the period. Sometimes I label as period, P-E-R. Period equals pi over B, which is pi over one half. Therefore, it's my, my, new, my period is two pi. The phase shift is defined as C over B, in this case, pi over four, divide by one half. So two pi over four reduces to pi over two. All right, so let's actually put this on paper again. If I wanted to, see, I know, I know the, the, the shift's gonna be in a positive direction, so I can start graphing something like this. And uh, so let's, looking at the period, it's gonna be two pi, so that's pretty stretched out. So let me label this as two pi. Normally it is one pi, but because B was one half, it stretched out our period. So the midpoint of these two would be somewhere up here. And I would label that as pi. And what, 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 well, we know what happens. Actually, let's, let's go through what happens. Ah. Okay, well, that, this is fine, this is fine. What is my phase shift? Phase shift is pi over two. So let's put that down. Pi over two is right here, you know, a midpoint between zero and pi. So that's my pi over two. And what happens there? That's where my asymptote, the one that normally lies on the y-axis, gets shifted over and I start, I, I start the process at that asymptote. So I could put my asymptote down. We're okay with that. Now let's go one period across. One period is two pi. So if I'm going two pi in this direction, I actually will end up at, um, what is it? Five pi over two? pi over two, yeah, two and a half pi. And that's gonna be my other asymptote. So I picked uh, an example where it's pretty stretched out. Well, what's, what's the midpoint of this? We know that the midpoint will contain my zero and my zero will occur at, if this is pi, this is half, this is two, this is three, pi over two. So I can put this point down as, and label it in, in red, I don't know if you could see that. All right, well, our, if, you're, if, you, if you look back to a unfazed, un, uh, untransformed uh, graph, you recall what these points are. These are the points between, uh, between uh, the y-axis and midpoint of my period, which is right there. And that is where my, the Y value is one. And we sometimes think of that as the 45 degree angle or pi over four. In this case, it's not really 45 degree angle, but that's, that's what we can sort of resort to. Well, let's, that's, so, so the halfway between the start of my graph and midpoint would be at pi. And the other um, quarter, I don't know, qu the quarter step would be at, um, 
what would it be that this is a 2 pi? Oh, right, right, of course, it's, it's labeled right there. So, let me, but what happens at this point is, is really normally an un untransformed graph. My value here would be one, but, and this would be negative one. Normally I would put my dots right here and right here, but because the A value is three, what that has effect is it stretches it out vertically by a factor of three. So let's label one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. And let's put those points down. So this at pi, my graph would have a value of right there of three. And on the negative side, at two pi, it would have the value of negative three. And, it's, and as we know, near the asymptotes, it's going to approach the asymptote, it's going to go through this point, this point, this and, it, and go to the negative infinity, approaching this asymptote. Um, as you can see, it's getting really stretched out. So for me to graph this nicely, it's going to be kind of a, a challenge. It actually has to go through this point. It's beginning to look almost like a straight line. In reality, it's not, but and something, and it's going to negative infinity in that direction. Okay. Well, that's how you. You uh, graph a full, well, not quite full, but almost a full transformation of cotangent function. Okay, the important thing about this is the midpoint where my x, my, my y equals zero, what the asymptotes are, and of course my quarter way points. And we realize that this is periodic function, therefore this is going to repeat on both sides of uh, these asymptotes, but if I were to put that down, this would get even uglier than this graph would be almost unreadable. But no, there it is. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.